Hey guys, I want to welcome you to season three of Gripped, Awakening the Grown in a Generation for Revival and the, turn of, and the Return of the Lord. My name is Billy Humphrey. And I'm Corey Russell. And we are stoked that you are joining us for season three. We just got some stats on the podcast. We ranked in nine countries. Come on. I mean, that's crazy. People in Slovakia are listening. Shout out to you in Slovakia. We see you. We see, we see you, Slovakia. <laughs> we know Brazil. There's so many that have been listening in Brazil. We love you. We love Brazil. All over the United States. We're blessed because this is just something that God put on Corey's heart that we should get together and do. Yeah. And the Lord's been blessing it. And right now, if you happen to be listening, I encourage you to check out the YouTube of this because we are in a brand new studio again. Come on. And we've gotten a significant upgrade. So all that to say that this whole season, we're, we're super excited because we felt like we, we got a word from the Lord from a dear friend of ours, a prophetic brother, a dear friend of ours yes. who we're actually going to be with tonight. That's right. And that word was that we were supposed to do the whole season on the intimacy message, yes. on intimacy with Jesus, intimacy with the Father, what it looks like to live in this mystical communion of connection with the Godhead. And so, I'm man, bro, I'm just blessed. I'm so excited to be doing this. I love you. I know, And bro. I love you guys. And yeah, it, it hit me. And I just want to always give a little bit of backdrop. I, uh, I was sitting outside on my deck probably... I don't know, a couple of years ago, no, a year ago, whatever. And I just began to say, me and Billy need to do something together. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I We have been running together since 2003, had coming on 20 years of deep history, friendship, highs, lows, ups, downs, sideways, and everything. And and there are just, and, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is to give you guys that vision to find that brother, find that sister comrade in the yeah. Lord to go on a journey. Yeah. And it, that's what we wanted to do. We hit the first season on revival and uh, we hit the second season on the knowledge of God mm -hmm. and this one on intimacy. Yeah. And and this one is where it all changed for me. <laughs> it's absolutely life changing. I want to say this. If you're listening, if you're watching, go to the Grip Podcast on IG. Follow us there. We're getting a whole new flow this season. With We're going to come strong this year. Yeah. Lots of... <laughs> We're going to be posting a lot more. We're going to be interacting a lot more. And we want to engage with you more. Yeah, yeah. It's a good. It's a good thing God's given us, and I, and I feel like we just want to engage with what how He's stirring so many of your hearts. We've gotten so much feedback from you guys. We love how the Lord's ministering to so many. Yeah. So tell your friends and and follow us. And it's going to be an amazing season. Again, I love it. Our buddy Brian Guerin had a dream. Yeah. And he sent it. Really, he sent it to us right when we finished the second one. Yeah. And right when we started talking about the third one. Yeah. And he says, I feel like I got a word for your third season. It's to be about intimacy. And I am really excited and, and I'm really looking forward to going in deeper. I think, I think it's awesome that, so Brian Guerin, if you don't know him, his ministry is called Bridal Glory. <laughs> Yes. So the Lord gives us a word from the guy whose ministry is called Bridal Glory to do a whole season on Bridal Glory. But he had this dream where we were at the we were at the feet of Jesus like Mary of Bethany, and he knew it was uh, in front of a camera, and it, it, it right. had to do with the podcast. And and we were just describing this encounter of intimacy, and though it was light and relational, it had this great depth of intimacy with Jesus, and so. We're going to give that to you this season. So let me just tee you up. So we thought it would be good just to start with our journey and what we would say is the intimacy message or, you know, intimacy with the Godhead. And How did you get marked for intimacy with God? How did, how did that happen for you? Yeah, I'd say for me, it was 1997. I've, you know, I've, we've shared our story. I got radically saved and born into a season of revival. And it was explosion. My first six months were five meetings a week till three in the morning. I was baptized into God. And and I remember I began to watch church services go back to, to normal. I began to watch. After the six months, I was starting to see the we were going in. Everything was just kind of going back to cookie cutter church. And I was getting so upset, so angry. 
So I would just get up every Sunday, and when it came exhortation time, I'd scream at everybody, come to the prayer meeting, come, come to the prayer meeting. And the more I cried out to people, the less people would come. What, what was exhortation time? <laughs> they just opened my head. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody have a prophetic word? <laughs> I got a prophetic word every week. Come to the prayer meeting. Get to the prayer meeting. <laughs> yeah. I said, because I wanted to see rev- I wanted to see another wave of a revival, yeah. another move of God. Yeah. And so nobody came. I got angrier and angrier and angrier. And it was about that season that a friend had just come back from Kansas City, and they were holding this book called Fire Within. Mm. And uh, it's a, a book on St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. And by this time, I was working. I, I was working. I didn't know anything. I'm a kid from Arkansas. I knew about God moving, and that's about it. And um uh, and, and so I was working second factory, a second shift at a factory, air conditioning factory. And this is what I want to say. People ask me all the time, what was your greatest season in God? Was it in the heights of a big revival service? Was it a big meeting? One of the, the greatest season of my life happened for three months on a second shift in an air conditioning factory. And second shift, is, the, is it evening? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's two to 10 at night. So two in the afternoon till 10, 11 at night. <clears throat> and I began to read Fire Within and began to read St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross's description that God dwells on the inside of us and that we were made for encountering God deep within our spirits. Because I was finding that I was getting so burned out and angry of telling people to come to prayer meetings and I so wanted to see God move And God says, I'm going to do that, but you need to understand, I want to do it inside of you. And I want to do it inside of you. And revival begins with an explosion on the inside. And uh, yeah, this season is going to be a good one, people. (laughs) I began, and and this is what happened. I began to experience a tangible spirit of burning that began to rest on me. And I would spend the better part of three months, eight hours a day with fire going up and down my body. I didn't understand it. I didn't fully comprehend it. But I knew that God was a flame and he was living on the inside of me. And God was baptizing me in his fire, in his jealousy, in his love, in his passion. And uh, And uh, he rearranged my vision. He rearranged my what I'm after. I want to see historic revival break into the earth, but I, but I knew that it's about something exploding on the inside of his people. And uh, that season redirected me. It it, it, it set me in the right uh, grid, and, and I've honestly not been the same since. You told me about how in that time, there was you. You did two forty-day fasts within a year. Oh yeah, and you were finding yourself like almost like grinding the gears. Oh yeah. Well, th- this is the other thing, and we'll just be vulnerable. That's the thing about intimacy, and I remember old Jack Frost used to call it into me see. Yeah. Intimacy is vulnerability. That's right. And it's openness with God, and and so my intimacy began with the fire. Yes. But it also began because we had that revival season. But, and I'll just be honest with you, uh, there was this cute girl that would sing during our revival services, and I liked her. But every time we got around, we ended up kissing too much and going too far. We ended up getting engaged, broke a lot of boundaries. And, uh, and, and that's why I'm a huge advocate for early, you know, you know, pre-marriage, really go strong in accountability and coming underneath Poor, leadership poorly. and doing those things right because it's going to set the stage for the rest of your life and the rest of your marriage and bring so much blessing on your life. And well, we didn't do well in our boundaries. And so we end up getting married. You know, we get Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, I got married. And but I had this thing in me and and it's like day one of my marriage. God, I'll never let you down again. <laughs> I don't know who that guy was, but I'll never let you down again. And so my first year of marriage, I'd literally do two 40-day fasts. I felt that if I ever let up, I would backslide. I think that was a driving fear. Mm-hmm. If I don't stop pushing in, I'm going to backslide. 
And so I'm 40 days fasting. This is why my wife, my wife loved the intensity about me, but she's like, Corey, you're next level. What's going on? And I'm like, well, it's all for the Lord, honey. And uh, I was being driven. And so shortly after we, we got married in 98, moved to Kansas City in 2000. And then shortly after we went, I went with a guy by the name Gary Weens and I went with him to Norway. And uh, we get to Norway to a YWAM base, and I would teach in the mornings. We would do something in the mornings, 9 to noon, and then I would have off all day long. Mm -hmm. So from noon to 10 at night, I'd just be alone in my room because Gary just hung out in his room. So I'm not much of a tourist kind of guy that goes out and about, so I'll hang out in my room. And and Jesus met me on the first day. He goes, I want to talk to you about the season you keep trying to forget. That's what he said to me. I want to talk to you about the season that you keep trying to forget. And he said, Mm. he took me to the story of Peter. And I I really want to spend a whole session on Peter. We're going to talk a whole episode. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about Peter. And so he says, I want to talk to you about the season. And the Lord took me through Peter's great journey, his failure, and his restoration over those six days. And all I can say because it's what's profound is that we emptied our bank account for me to go on this trip. I literally, my wife felt led, honey, I think you're supposed to go. And that, I tell you not, that week literally altered my life. It changed me as a man, as a husband, as a father, and it shifted everything. And so I want to, we're going to get into a lot of that, but that was my entrance points. The spirit of burning with St. Teresa and the Peter encounter set the stage for the last 20 something years of my life. <laughs> so for me, I was, I was a youth pastor. We've told the stories about revival. We told them all in season one, but I was a youth pastor. We had the season of revival and it was one of these things where everything I geared my life toward was to see a breakthrough, to see a breakthrough, the power of the Holy Spirit break in, to see revival take over our region. And we saw a measure of it in my youth group. Well, when that thing began to lift, uh, I was, I mean, the only way I can describe it is I was in depression. I, I literally was, I was still in the ministry, but I was in a depression yeah. that lasted probably about six months. And I, I, it, I'm, it's a good thing I didn't see a doctor at that point because they probably would have put me on some medication. I was not, not in a good frame. And so in the, in the pain of that, I can remember coming into my office and I would say to my assistant, hey, uh, let's, just, let's just cancel the meetings today. I can't, I can't do them. I can't, like pastoral stuff. I just, yeah, I'd have yeah, her just yeah. reorder my whole schedule and I would go lay in this little makeshift prayer room we had. We had a bunch of donated couches that people are going to throw away and there's breaking down everywhere. <laughs> I would lay in there and I would just, I would just ache. And, and it, it was like, I was just mourning over what I felt like we had lost. But it was in that season, the Lord just began to shepherd my heart and he began to like, he just began to love me. Well, I'm in this season of deep pain and the guy that's the young adult pastor at our church, he comes in, he goes, hey, uh, they're doing a young adult conference in, in Kansas City. He goes, it looks a little sketchy to me, but I know this is your sort of thing. So <laughs> why don't you come with me? And and so we went out and that was one thing, 2002. Wow. I was there. And Mike Bickle preaches, I remember he preaches six sessions straight on intimacy. And he never cracks the book of Song of Solomon. He preaches it from the New Testament epistles. He preaches it from the, the biblical overview. He preaches Father Heart of God. <clears throat> and, and by the time he gets to like the seventh and eighth, he's got like two sessions left. I'm literally saying out of my mouth, I just, and because they're talking about Song of Solomon, yeah, I just yeah. wish this guy would finally preach some Song of Solomon. <laughs> and I, and I, I don't know if I said it to my friend or just said it in my heart, but I remember thinking, what am I saying? Because I, didn't, I had no value for this. I had no value for uh, the intimacy message, for anything that was too much about the love of God I thought was weak. Yes. Anything that was too much about the grace of God I thought, was, I thought it was weak. And I had no value for understanding the depths of desire that's in the heart of God for us and then the reciprocating action of love toward Him and how that is the whole point. And I know that sounds crazy, but I was into revival. I was into repentance. Yes, I yes. was into you know hard prayer meetings. Like if you don't sweat, it almost doesn't even count. And this is how I was built. 
And then Mike gets up there and he says, let's turn over to Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse five. And he said, and, and he reads this verse about being dark, but lovely. She says, I am dark, but lo lovely. Don't look at me because the sun has tanned me. My, I've worked in, my, in, in the fields and, and for my, my brothers, but, but I haven't taken care of my yeah. own garden. Yes. And he reads that verse and I'm like, that's me. I haven't taken care of my own garden. And he says, listen, God sees you in your weakness and in your darkness and in your brokenness. And he sees you and he says, even though your love is small, it's real. Uh. And that this idea that I that that the Father, that Jesus was looking at me and saying, My little love was real love, it it caused something to move inside of me like, oh my God, I've been trying to earn it. Yeah. This whole time, I've been trying to earn your affections and your approval and your affirmations. And you're saying that I'm a real lover, even though I'm an immature lover. And then he goes on and he says, and even in your darkest moment, he loves you still the same. And those two truths, they hit me like a bomb. And I remember just drinking in the Song of Solomon that even though I'm weak, even though I'm broken, even though I sin, not just make mistakes, I sin. God loves me yes. with a focused, intentional love. And then he looks at me and he says, do you love me back? And even if I can only offer him a little speck, he goes, it's real. <laughs> Your love is real. It exploded in me. I remember I got Mike's 20 CDs. We used to have these things called CDs. <laughs> 20 CD series. Ask your parents about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I put that Song of Solomon 20 CD series on repeat. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> your neck is like the ivory tower of David. I had no idea what it was. I was just listening. I could not drink in enough of it. And when I came home from the conference and over the next few months, people were like, what happened to you? What happened? Because I was so tenderized and so softened. And so I was just so overwhelmed by the revelation that God is real, that God, he, he really loves me. He knows me personally and that he doesn't discount me and my weaknesses and my failures. That was the, that was the springboard for me. Mike would make these statements. I'm not a sinner who struggles to love God. Mm. I'm a lover of God who struggles with sin. <laughs> that fundamental shift, he would say, I'm not a hopeless hypocrite. I'm a lover of God. And he, he said, therefore, I'm successful. This is the definition. This is, this is the point of it all. I am great because I'm loved by God and I'm a lover of God. There are, therefore, I'm successful. And, and some of you guys are just getting started on your journey. And I want to say to you, you want to get so rooted and grounded in this revelation. No matter how big your life gets, how big the bank account, how big the ministry, how big the opportunities come, at the end of the day, you are successful because you are loved by God and you're a lover of God. This, this right here has done more to shape, to transform, to reevaluate, to reassess what's greatness and success yeah. in the eyes of God. And uh, yeah, I, I just cannot wait to, to walk into this season. Yeah, Th that point he's making, that cannot be overstated. That success in this life, the, the reason that you were made, what were you designed for? It's to be loved yes. and to be a lover. That's yes. it. That's it. That's, that is the pinnacle. Now, here's the problem is we've made that cliche and we've, oh, oh Jesus loves me. This I know the Bible tells me so. Yeah. And we've, we've dumbed down what it means to be a recipient of the affections of the uncreated God. We've dumbed that down so that we don't even realize what it looks like. Hey! <laughs> hey! What it looks like when God, hey, he, he sets his gaze on you and says, you, I'm, I am in love with you. I, I, I made you to love you. I created you to be the object of my desire. The uncreated God formed you, fashioned you, dreamt of you from ages past so that he could have a love relationship <laughs> with you. That... <laughs> 
That is it. That's the pinnacle. And I love to say this, and everything else is details. Yes. Everything else is minor details. That's the pinnacle of existence. Is coming into this intimate love relationship with the God who is a burning fire of love. And so we are going to unpack this through, <laughs> through this whole season. And uh, we're, I'm, in a, I'm in a personally a super tender moment, Corey's in a personally super tender moment. So there may be just moments of inbreakings. <laughs> the Holy Spirit may just hijack the whole podcast season. And that we don't care. We <laughs> tell God that's what we want. <laughs> we're, not, we're not trying to do a cool podcast. In fact, I, I've never even watched a full pod- podcast. I don't, I've never watched an entire episode of a podcast. So we just want to give you what God's doing in us, and we want to see you marked, marked with the reality of His love, marked with a vision for going deep in the love of God. To know what this means to be loved by the one who is love itself and then to reciprocate, to give him back everything that's due him and then where that takes us on our journey. We're going to talk about really important passages. We're going to talk about Revelation 3.20. We're going to talk about Peter's life journey. We're going to talk about Mary of Bethany. There are so many. We're going to talk about the bridal paradigm, the father heart of God. There's so many tributaries of this. You can spend... Well, we're, guess what? We're going to spend eternity on this. Yes. <laughs> so you could easily spend th- a thousand hours and not even plumb the depths of it. You want to pray? <laughs> or you got something else? And, and the, yeah. And <laughs> the power of his love is going to set you free from sin. The power of his love. You were made by God. And you were made for God. And you'll only be ultimately satisfied in God. You were made to be satisfied in Him. Father, I pray we give you this season. (laughs) Awaken love. Touch us, God. Set yourself as a seal of love. Jesus, Lord, even right now, I'm asking that you would grip hearts with a revelation of your desire. I feel like that word that the Lord gave you when you were working in the in the warehouse, when you were working in the air conditioner. What was that? What was that? That phrase he spoke to your heart. When you said it, I felt like that is something for people this season. (laughs) I don't remember. (laughs) Lord, I'm asking right now, bring people into a deep revelation that your love is for them. Hey! That you are focused and fixed upon them. (laughs) That you want them. That you desire them, not for them to do something for you but for them to be loved by you. Mark every heart we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.